Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Kes Group uh, and in this video I want to talk about uh, Phoenix FD for Maya. So I want to spend some time playing with the different settings that we have and I want to show you a cool trick that, uh, that we can do now. Obviously uh, dealing with simulations um, you have to often deal with a lot of trial and error. So uh, you use some settings for your uh, simulation and then uh, run this whole simulation. It will take probably uh, several hours and then you see the result. And uh, if you're not happy with it, um, there's little you can do in terms of logically deducting what settings you need to change. So there's always this um, matter of uh, trying out different settings and seeing how they affect your si simulation. So until you get the, the desire result in the end. So we decided that this is not uh, really useful and uh, instead of doing taking this approach uh, we have added another option uh, in Phoenix that would allow you to basically speed up this process. Uh, this is done through something called re-simulation. So uh, what the re-simulation options here allow us to do is uh, take a given simulation that we already have and then on top of it do additional simulation which will allow us to amplify the resolution of uh, our simulation and add small detail to it. Uh, basically this will allow us to uh, do low quality simulations, simulations which have um, lower resolution and therefore will run faster uh, for the rough part so we can make many different attempts very quickly until we get the result that we want and then uh, when we have the result that we want uh, we can re-simulate on top of this uh, simulation that we have and because we already have uh, the, these uh, velocity fields we have this uh, information about how the fluid is moving we can just work on the small detail and I'm going to show you how this is done uh, with a very uh, simple example so obviously we have this uh, simulation here and I'm just going to start it and uh, you'll see that I'm just uh, putting some smoke in this box and you can see it falling down and you see the simulation is running very very quickly I get the result I'm also using this GPU preview right now uh, that is uh, explained in another video and uh, in a couple of seconds I'm finished with my simulation so I can uh, I can play it now and we can see the simulation and this is obviously a very rough one so uh, let's try and uh, do another simulation on top of that. So let's let's re-simulate this. Uh, to do this, uh, of course, I need to do uh, several things in the beginning. So before I even start my simulation, I need to make sure that I go to the output and I have velocity enabled and wavelet enabled. So these um, two options along with the UVW, but this will enable automatically when you turn on the wavelet. Uh, when I enable those, I'll have the information that I need so that I can do a re-simulation on top of my simulation. So I have run my simulation with those options enabled and now I'm going to click re-simulate. And then I'm going to use these options here uh, to show me uh, to control the amount of um, amplification that I'm going to have and the amount of detail. Now I want you to notice that as I check this box, here is the rough grid, you can see there's a lot of space, the cells are quite big. And when I click re-simulate you get a much finer grid. And uh, I can specify that I want to apply grid I, I can also just add some particles if I need to or I can do both and right now I don't have any particles so I'm just going to affect the grid. Here's the option with which I'm basically amplifying the resolution of my grid two times and there is, here is the method. Uh, I'm going to use wave late nights which is going to produce the best results. Pretty much the other options I can leave unchecked, uh, it doesn't matter. I just have this um, wavelet strength which is basically a multiplier uh, for those tiny details that are going to happen. And uh, let's start the simulation once again. So right now you're going to see that uh, obviously the things, uh, the simulation is going to run, run a little bit slower, uh, but we get a much, much finer grid, much finer detail. And because we already created the shape uh, of the of the simulation, basically the the basic uh, shape that we wanted to achieve in the beginning, uh, we're now able to only. Uh, amplify the tiny details, add some little vortices uh, here and there. And of course, if I want to, I can even change some of the dynamics here uh, to to finally uh, add small details. So for example, I can increase the vorticity and this will make uh, these finer details more, um, uh, it will make them more obvious and we'll see uh, more vorticity there. So as you can see, let's give it a couple of seconds and we'll have uh, the fine the finely simulated result in the end. 
Uh, once again, this is going to make things much, much faster because right now, if I just run this very high resolution simulation, thing could be slower because I need to calculate all these velocity fields. But because I now have those, uh, I can save much time. And uh, the idea is once again, as I told you, do the rough simulation, get the basic uh, result that you want at a lower resolution. And then you're go just going to use this wavelet uh, uh, to add some small detail on top of your already done simulation. I'm just going to pause this and pick a frame here and just very quickly show the difference between the previous one and the final one. So uh, the difference is quite obvious and we we're able to add uh, fine detail uh, very quickly like that. So right now I'm going to close this and open another scene and I'm going to pause the simulation for a second. Uh, pause the recording basically. Uh, so I've already opened my scene and as you can see in this scene I have already uh, finished the simulation where I have this uh, object just splashing into the water, I have this sphere splashing the water. And uh, I did the rough simulation, the first simulation um, beforehand and now what I want to do, I'm happy with this result but I really want to add some uh, splashes, some foam and splashes to this. And once again I can use the same technique of uh, re-simulation, so let's say um, I want to do this once again before in before the beginning of the first simulation I need to go to the output and make sure the velocity is enabled right now I don't need to wavelet and UVW because uh, I'm not going to add any uh, wavelet turbulences to my simulation I just want to um, create those um, particles and for this one I only need the velocity this time so the velocity is enabled and then I'm going to go cl click resimulate and you see that here in effect I switched from grid to particles because I don't care about refining the grid I'm happy with the grid that I already have I just want to fine tune the particles and work on those I'm going to switch to particles and once again because uh, this conservation quality here basically uh, concerns the quality of the simulation of the actual grid cells and actual fluid this can be set to zero because it will not affect the simulation of my particles Okay, so let's go to liquids and you see that foam and splashes are disabled, so I'm going to enable them now. And let's quickly uh, run the simulation right now. So the same thing that happened before is going to happen now. We already have the velocity fields, we're already using the old simulation and we're just adding some splashes right now. So you can see the splashes here, those uh, blue particles and the white ones are the, is the foam. And obviously the settings here, I have too many splashes I think, so uh, let's see how quickly and easy it is to adjust this. So I'm going to pause this and uh, let's very quickly take a look at the settings. Uh, first the foam, you see that the threshold is set to something very low but the birth rate is zero. Which means that the options here actually are not creating any foam whatsoever. Uh, really the foam is created from the splashes. If we check the settings of the splashes we have this uh, foam on heat probability which means that the particles from the splashes are creating my foam particles. And I have put something very huge here for birth rate. So let's, uh, let's reduce this value. Let's make it like 10 times lower and uh, start the simulations once again. And you'll notice that the simulation is running pretty quickly. If I was uh, running the whole thing uh, the liquid simulation along with the particles it would be slower but this time because I already have the liquid simulated I'm able to work just on the particles that uh, as you can see I have much less of now and I also have uh, less uh, foam because obviously there are uh, less um, splashes uh, particles so there's again for me this is too much so I'm going to stop it once again pause this and uh, make this something like 4 and this time because I want to still have lots of foam I'm going to increase this probability so right now I'm going to have more splashes uh, uh, less splashes and more foam and let's try this again as you can see now I have uh, far less splashes and the foam uh, is uh, enough so let's pause and hit render now as you can see uh, this is again a very simple idea we do uh, one part of the simulation the liquid simulations in the beginning and uh, once we are happy with this we can very quickly add uh, the particles the foam and the splashes as a second pass which will again give us the flexibility to first fine-tune 
uh, the simulation of the liquid, do this in a quick way. Well, we're going to do this very quickly because we're not simulating any particles. And then once we have the particle simulated, uh, the liquid simulated, we can then fine tune the particles. So by splitting this uh, with the re-simulation approach, we're able to finish our job uh, much more quickly and uh, we're going to have uh, far greater control this way because we're going to have time to experiment. So here is our rendering. We see we have uh, some motion board uh, splashes and then we also have uh, some nice foam. Alright, uh, this pretty much concludes this video. Uh, I'm Dimitri Krstev Jimmy and until next time, I thank you for watching.